My name is uh, Lloyd T. Briggs the third, or Tommy Briggs, or Thomas, depending on the setting. I'm a financial engineer. It's super important to just, when you wake up in the morning, just kind of, excuse my language, completely fuck off you know, for at least an hour, um, half an hour, an hour ideally, just disconnect from everything. Don't even look at your phones. Keep them on silent, put them down, don't look for at least a half hour or so. Um, and just kind of be a human being, you know, enjoy the peacefulness of the beginning of the day. I've always kind of been been an entrepreneur at heart you know I've always been wired that way and I started as a kid you know um, saved my little Christmas money I never spent my Christmas money my birthday money I always saved that up so I just had a good little you know little baby nest egg and then when I was like I think six or seven years old I started in school like my mom would take me to smart and final down the street and I would go get these like uh, airheads, like 120 pack for six bucks and um, take them to school. I tried to sell them for a dollar each. I would sell a couple here and there, then I would adapt and then I dropped the price to like 75 cents and I started selling some more. I dropped it to 50 cents and then I, they started flying off the shelf. So I was making good money doing that and I would go and I would re-up and then buy more boxes and then you know buy different candies and scale up the business a little bit. And then I even got into stationery and pencils and all that stuff. Tom, do me a favor. What's up, boss? This is for Adolfo here. Yeah. Just do me a favor, just go get him squared away. I got you, boss. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. When I was 18 years old, on my own, I started, you know, as a busser in a restaurant, um, and I started, you know, getting an understanding of making, making your own money in in the real world, and and working what it's like to like have an actual job, job, and have an employer, and coexisting with other employees. Um, very social and it, it was just it was new it was different and um, I worked hard at that yeah I've always like kind of worked like my life depended on it when it comes to anything so I quickly got promoted to a food runner I was an 18 year old kid working alongside you know 50 year old 60 year old people um, that have been doing that same thing, waiting tables their entire life to reach what they thought was the pinnacle, uh, which was where we were working at, which was at Nobu. Um, and so for them to have that in their mind as, as they're like, they've made it, you know? And for them to be at peace with that, that was so unbelievably like disturbing and scary to me that it was like, Every day I went into work, I would get slapped in the face with like, don't forget that this is just a stepping stone. But that was a good learning experience and it helped me build my little net, my little baby net worth up um, to where I could try something, which is when I finally got into my first like legitimate attempt at an adult business, um, which was the car dealership. And then 
that didn't work out so well because I don't think my heart was in it. So I, I figured it would be wise to get out of that business. So what did I do then? I went and got me like a little, uh, you know, something nice, you know, for, a, I guess like a patting yourself on the back situation. I went and got my first luxury car, which was a seven series BMW. Same thing, like a year or two old. Um, just because I didn't want to pay the depreciation as usual. Let everyone else do that. Pay for the options, pay for the depreciation. When you're done with it, I'll take it. Offer up is like a like a 21st century version of Craigslist. Advanced, you know, a little bit more, a couple more brain cells involved. Uh, but it's a good place to get top shelf furnishments, you know, secondhand new-ish, you know, sometimes still in the packaging, but for like a fraction of the cost, you know, a third, half, sometimes a quarter of the price. CB2, mm. sometimes restoration hardware, um, HG Buttercup, like all the really good shit, but cheap, you know, ish. Way better than retail, that's for sure. But it's like kind of annoying though to coordinate with other people's schedules. I'm too busy. And then everyone's always up to all kinds of stuff in LA. So they're too busy. So it just doesn't happen. So hence why I'm on the floor reading right now. <laughs> you have to be flexible and you have to be patient. If you're patient and flexible, you can get anything you want for a fraction of the price. So I got that, and then um, and that was awesome. I thought I was a big dog, but then the payment kept hitting, and I'm like, okay, it's a great car, worth it, but it kind of stings a little bit, right? Then I had this epiphany where I'm like, what if I rent this thing out to cover my payment? So I did it, see if I could cover my payment. At the end of the month, I looked over and I was like, holy shit, I just did three times my payment. What's going on here? So after the car payment, I think I cleared 200% of the payment. And uh, so I was renting it out to these little TCP guys, you know, these uh, high-end uh, personal driver guys. I guess what they would do is they would come snag it for me for 150 bucks. I would take their insurance, keep it on file and all that, make sure everything's kosher. And then, um, and they would pay me 150 bones because they don't have the car. They had like whatever Honda Civic or it is, whatever it is that they had but they wanted to take the higher end job because the higher end job pay them like a thousand bucks for the day. So they figured, okay, give this kid 150 bones, take his car and I can pocket, you know, 700 bucks after fuel. So it was a win-win. And um, that's when I had the epiphany. I said, okay, let me try another one. So I got another one. Um, I obviously I had to get myself a car. So I got myself a car, a Benz, uh, CLS. Then I got another car, Jaguar F-Type, um, to run out. And I put the Benz to run out later on, not straight away. I put the Jag to run out immediately. And that one just flew off the shelf because um, I had done a lot of research on that. That one flew off the shelf. I mean, it was booked, I think, three or four months in advance. And then that's when I was like, okay, there's something here. So I revisited the financials of the rental business and I was like, well, shoot, this is a good business. I just don't have enough cars. So if I, if I do five times this amount, then I'm, wow, I'll be doing okay. If I do 10 times this amount of cars, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, 20, 20, 30 times this amount of cars, then you're doing real good. So then I made a decision to just see it through. And uh, here we are today.